This is iFiber One News. Here are today's top stories. Awaiting a second murder trial, Gustavo Tapia Rodriguez has been sentenced to life in prison for the 2016 killing of Quincy resident Jill Sunberg. Could Grant County's inaugural Liberty State rally on Saturday be a sign that the idea of dividing Washington into two states is gaining traction? The Wenatchee Wild were back on the road Sunday night and looking to close out their BCHL Interior Division semifinal series. It was back to home sweet home for the Afraid of Tigers baseball team who played their second and third home games on Friday. From the iFiber One newsroom, this is iFiber One News. And it starts now. Awaiting a second murder trial, Gustavo Tapia Rodriguez has been sentenced to life in prison for the 2016 killing of Quincy resident Jill Sunberg. A jury last month found Tapia Rodriguez guilty of first-degree murder with multiple aggravators and one count of second-degree unlawful possession of a firearm. Sunberg's body was located December 22, 2016 along the Old Vantage Highway near Quincy. Investigators say she had been shot multiple times after being kidnapped from an RV park on State Route 283 where Sunberg lived. According to court records, following an argument, Sunberg was dragged out of the trailer and forced into an SUV and driven to the remote area near Quincy. Prosecutors say Tapia Rodriguez then shot Sunberg 13 times. Prosecutors indicated Tapia Rodriguez may have thought Sunberg was an informant for the county's interagency narcotics enforcement team, leading to the argument on the night of the murder. Tapia Rodriguez and Fernando Marquez Gutierrez, a material witness in the Sunberg case, are also charged with first-degree murder in the killing of a 21-year-old man just two weeks before Sunberg was murdered. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. This segment is brought to you by... Change doesn't have to be complicated. With a low-profile microwave hood combination that's ready to install right out of the box. It fits in the same space as your under cabinet hood, so you can get your microwave off the countertop and make space for the routines worth keeping. The low profile microwave hood combination from the number one selling appliance brand in the USA. Whirlpool Appliances, now available at More Furniture in Afreda. Could Grant County's inaugural Liberty State rally on Saturday be a sign that the idea of dividing Washington into two states is gaining traction? Grant County Liberty State Chapter Captain Danny Bulliard says it's a sign. If somebody were to approach you and say, this is a pipe dream, what would you tell them? I would tell them it's only a pipe dream because they're not involved yet. Yeah. They may be that one person that opens the floodgates and this takes off and we accomplish what we've been dreaming of. Yeah. And how feasible do you think this is? Very feasible. This is a constitutional process that's been done three times before in this country. We are following every step of the letter the way it should be. Assistant Captain Mike McKee was asked if the governing and economic structure of liberty would be comparable to Idaho. Population-wise, we're very close. Um, revenue, we're very close. Um, they're, you know, smaller states, South Dakota, North Dakota, they survive. And, uh, you know, we, we can survive well here. And it, it, it's one of those things where if we build it, people will come. Held at the Four Square Church in Moses Lake, security was tight at the well-attended rally. Four of the six security guards on scene were armed. However, the occasion was low-key with an introduction, a long educational video presentation by State Representative Matt Shea, the movement's spearhead. Next was a summary of what the economic and governing structure would look like in the state of Liberty. More power to your local branches of government. The government that affects you most is the closest to you. So your city councils, your county commissioners, but state government in the state of liberty will be in the background local communities will thrive because of the deregulation of businesses mining operations agriculture livestock and logging industries leaders then briefed everyone on the next steps moving forward so get involved find out what's going on find out what bills are out there find out how it's affecting you directly and then when it comes time to elect your delegates to vote on this stuff, they're the ones you're going to be talking to. Please do this for us. This is what we want in our state. This is what we want in the Constitution. That's where we put the real pressure on it. Right now, our job is to build 
momentum in the county. Because our next step, remember he gave those eight steps? We're still at step one. Next step is that we go to our county commissioners and we encourage them to join us. I'm Sean Goggins for iFiber One News. This segment is brought to you by your taste buds bored? Well then bring them to Jay's Teriyaki. Not only does Jay's have a variety of teriyaki dishes, they also offer mouth-watering salads and sides. Call Jay's 509-764-5155. Jay's Teriyaki, located at 123 East Broadway in Moses Lake. Because it's all in the sauce. The Wenatchee Wild were back on the road Sunday night and looking to close out their BCHL Interior Division semifinal series with the Cowichan Valley Capitals after taking a 3-2 lead in the best of seven set with a 2-1 overtime victory on home ice in Game 5 on Friday. Like nearly every game they've played in the postseason thus far, Wenatchee came out of the shoot gunning for their enemy's net, out shooting the Caps 13-5 in Period 1 but unable to best netminder Pierce Diamond and falling behind by the count of 1-0 through the game's opening 20 minutes after giving up the first goal to centerman Preston Brodziak at the 7-18 mark of the first. Cowich and Valley doubled their advantage to 2-0 at the 6-10 mark of the middle frame when defenseman David Melaragni punched home another tally on an odd man rush into the wild zone. But it took only 1 minute and 42 seconds for Wenatchee to answer back and finally get on the board when left winger Marco Reifenberger netted his fifth playoff goal at 7.52 of the second to pair the Caps' lead back to one. The Wild tied things up at 2-2, just 90 seconds into the final frame of regulation on right winger Nathan Iannone's second postseason marker and then grabbed their first lead of the contest at 11.41 of the third with left winger and team captain Lucas Souter's league-leading ninth postseason goal, which made it 3-2. Wenatchee's lead only lasted a shade over four minutes, however, as left winger Jordan Roberts' tally for Cowich and Valley at 15:44 of period three nodded the score at three apiece and eventually sent things into overtime for the second straight game. In the extra session, it only took five minutes and 52 seconds for defenseman Chad Sasaki to chamber the bullet, which would not only win the battle of game six by the final score of four to three, but also clinch Wenatchee's triumph in the series by the count of four games to two on his first postseason goal. Starting goaltender Austin Park played the game's entire 65-52 in the crease for the Wild and made 16 saves en route to his seventh playoff win. Wenatchee outshot Cowich and Valley 34-19 in the contest and came up empty on three power play opportunities along with stopping the Caps on a single man advantage chance. The Wild will now advance to the league's conference finals against either the Vernon Vipers or the Trail Smoke Eaters with games one and two of the series to be played at Town Toyota Center this Saturday and Sunday. Reporting for i One Sports... I'm Chris Hansen. It was back to home sweet home for the Afraid of Tigers baseball team who played their second and third home games on Friday, but their first games in John Snow Bryan Stadium. The Tigers hosted the East Valley Spokane Knights and beat both games in the doubleheader to keep their undefeated home record intact. The first game was a close one. The Tigers took a 4-1 lead before the Knights came battling back to take a two-run lead 6-4. The Tigers retook the lead off of the first home run of the season for the Tigers off the bat of Isaac Chamberlain. The Tigers went on to win that game by the score of 11-6. The second game was a much bigger win for the Tigers. Afreda piled on the runs and ended up knocking the Knights aside much easier the second time, 14-4. The Tigers advanced to 3 and 2 on the season with a spotless home record, those two losses coming against Cheney on the road. The three wins the Tigers have high Sela for the most in the league, however, Sela is still the favorite to win the division. The Tigers will next play on Tuesday when they begin conference play by traveling to take on the Wapato Wolves. I'm Adam Chikoski, for iFiber One Sports. This is iFiber One News. For more information on these stories and other news, Visit us online at ifiber1.com or check us out on Facebook.